Hey guys, Robert 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to show you how to fix the dreaded min tip error on this TAS 6. Um, the process we're going to be walking through is specific to the TAS, but a lot of the principles are going to be the same for a, a lot of printers on the market. So if you have a different brand or uh, some of the Creality printers and such, um, a lot of this parts will be the same. So the process and the um, terminology and stuff like that is going to be the same. It'll just be where things are actually located it will be different. All right, so you're going to need a couple tools to get started. Um, basically, uh, you're going to need several Allen wrenches um, based on what you're working with. Here I've got just a handful of them. Um, I know the sizes that I need. Um, you're gonna, if you know for sure that the uh, temperature probe is actually bad, which I do in this case, uh, you're going to need a replacement, which is this guy right here. I just got it in from um, the factory a couple days ago. Um, just now getting around to actually putting it in though. Um, or if you're not sure it's bad and you're just wanting to try to see if the actual probe is good, you're going to need a multimeter. Um, I'll link to instructions below on how to actually uh, test the temperature probe with the multimeter. Um, I don't actually have mine right now. Uh, I knew mine was bad so I was just replacing it, but I can't find the multimeter. It's really just connecting uh, the meter to two pins. It's not difficult, but I will provide instructions so that in case you're wanting to go through that process first. All right, so before we go to get started, uh, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take off um, our main extruder, and then I'm going to zoom in on it so we can walk through the process. All right, so with the TAS 6, I just grabbed the Allen wrench that fits this um, bolt here. We want to loosen this up and take it out. Um, I also did want to note that there is two different type of extruders for the TAS 6. You want to make sure you match up the one um, to the, what you have. Um, they're not necessarily backwards compatible. And then the temperature probe between them are different. So the main thing to look for is going to be uh, the cables down here I'll show you in a minute. Uh, so now that that's done, we want to pull this apart here. Uh, be careful with these pins. Um, Basically, they do break off. I've actually broken a couple off before. I had to get replacement parts. It was no fun. All right, so we got this out here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn this printer off, which I should have done before unplugging that, but that's fine. And I'm gonna zoom in uh, so we can actually start working on this. All right, guys, so here's our extruder. Um, we need to take a couple pieces off so that we can get to uh, the hot end and then we have to uh, take out the old uh, temperature probe and put the new one in. Now the new one does come with um, an extra harness here so if you broke off the pins or your harness was missing or if you I don't know cut them before in the past and just connected them together which I have seen done um, you'll want to use that uh, if you're if you already have a good harness uh, then just go ahead and use what you have all right so the first thing I want to do is go ahead and take off this tubing um, you're probably going to see a zip tie on here I've cut off the zip tie um, but if you do have one just go ahead and cut that and then we'll take this off and set it off to the side and let me just make sure these are all the way in here. All right, with, the, with that set off to the side, what we need to go ahead and do is go ahead and take this fan and fan duct off so we can actually work with the extruder. Um, I don't like trying to mess around with these, uh, with that here. It's just kind of in the way and you're risking doing more damage if you go that route. So uh, we've got uh, two bolts here. Once this comes off, there'll be two more bolts holding the fan duct in. So we'll go ahead and take those out really quick. Now again, this is oops, this is specific to this printer, but most of the printers behave and operate the same and have the same components. So you're going to have the same thing with a lot of the printers. You're going to have your fans, fan ducts, covers that go over the hot and stuff like that. But they're, they're really all the same. Um, they just behave differently. But in theory, they're all the same. So if you're working with one, you'll understand how to work with the, uh, most of them. Unless you get one that's really far out there. Alright, so this one's slightly smaller screw. All 
right. All right, now with these out of the way, uh, we can go ahead and work on getting the actual temperature probe out. So here, um, here's that harness that I was talking about. We can go ahead and just disconnect that really quick. And sorry, I'm trying to get the best camera angles as I'm going here, but if I move things around and mess it up for a second, I do apologize. All right, so that's disconnected. Now, here you're gonna see uh, two bolts going in here. The top one is for the heating element, and the bottom one here is for the um, heating pr uh, temperature probe. So we wanna take out the bottom one, or at least loosen it enough that we can slide the probe out. Um, I think I needed the smaller. This one uses the 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Now, be careful when working with this. Uh, you, even though you're replacing one of the cables, you don't wanna mess up anything else. Uh, you can't always get replacements for some of them. All right, so now with that, I'm able to just slide this temperature probe right out. And I wasn't too concerned with getting this one out because obviously I knew it was broke. Um, this was a refurbished unit, uh, so I didn't know how long I would have with some of these parts. Um, and if that doesn't slide out easily, uh, there's another bolt here that you wanna loosen so you can kind of turn this piece or take it off. Um, that will give you access to it because it's there to kind of block these things from coming out. Um, I don't know why that actually wasn't blocked, but it's gonna be blocking the heating element for sure. Uh, so if you do have issues, just go ahead and remove that screw and this little piece here, and then go ahead and pull it out. All right, so next we've got to get the temperature probe out of here. Um, so we can either try to feed this piece down or the probe up. Um, in this case, it's easier to feed the probe up uh, there's not much space to actually get the harness through. Uh, just be careful if you're trying to just, if you're not replacing it and you're testing the part um, because it is easy to kind of get it stuck in there and then have it use force to get it out. All right, so here's the old one. As you can see, it is pretty worn and I don't like how these wires were here around the edge. Uh, I th There's a chance I messed it up myself when I was uh, cleaning out the extruder one of the times um, but it just randomly stopped working on me uh, so I just went ahead and got the replacement all right uh, I'm sorry. so next we want to go ahead and take the temperature probe off of the other harness and then um, kind of just slide it in easily around the cables uh, try not to get it caught or stuck on anything and don't put too much force on it if it doesn't go through cleanly, uh, find a different path. All right, so that's over there. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the harness really quick since it's here. All right. And then now we can go ahead and slide the temperature probe into that opening. All right, just like so. And then we wanna go ahead and tighten this Allen Key back up. Now you want to make sure you get it good and tight because if that starts moving around or coming loose, you're going to have issues and it's going to continue to throw the error. So when you start to feel some resistance, just make sure that you're at the part where the um, temperature probes in the right spot. All right, there we go. And again, you want it tight, but not too tight. All right. 
so that looks good. All right, so now we want to go ahead and put our fan duct cover back on, and then we'll put the fan back on. So this goes on the same way it comes off. Just kind of just slide it in place, and we put those two screws in. Uh, make sure you use the screws that have the flat top and kind of the curved piece so it goes in there without uh, sticking out so that the fan sits in there right. And then just tighten those up. All right, now we want to put the fan on, make sure that it's going the right way. So these all have the label on the inside. So that's what we're going to want to do here. So just kind of pop this back in place. Uh, find out which way works the best cabling wise. I think that that works the best there. And then we'll put in the two screws that held that in place. And then, like I was mentioning, a lot of these are the same. Uh, while the parts might look different, I mean, the principles and everything are really the same between a lot of the printers. Um, they're really simple machines once you kind of learn the basics about them. The real complexities in the software, um, but fixing some of the actual issues and just troubleshooting and maintenance, it's all pretty straightforward. Um, I'm bringing that up basically just to say that don't be afraid to try to do some of the stuff on your own. Um, it's easy to do, especially if you have a printer that you've had for a little while and are more familiar with it. And there's a lot of videos out there for stuff that you're not. Um, all right, so now let's go ahead and put this in place. We've got to get that other screw back out. I'm going to go ahead and sit back on here, I know you can't see this yet. I'm just gonna screw this one piece in and then zoom back out so that you can see what I'm doing. All right, now that we got the extruder sitting back on the Z-axis, we're gonna wanna connect the harness. Um, like I mentioned before, be careful with these pins. They break off easily. I've had to replace some of them, uh, which was not exactly fun, and that's why I've gotta make sure that I slide these back in when I'm doing this. All right, so there we go. Now, if all goes well, when I power this back on, we should be good. Which we're good. All right, so that's the process to fix the um, men temp error. Basically what's happening is the printer's not able to read the temperature uh, of the hot end, so it's triggering the thermal protection uh, just to prevent any uh, accidental fires or anything like that because without the temperature probe, if the hot end just keeps heating up, it doesn't know when to stop. Uh, so it's really a critical part of any of your 3D printers. Uh, some of the printers, don't have the thermal runaway protection, so you won't have the issue like that. But if this was one of the Ender 3s that didn't have the thermal runaway protection and the uh, temperature probe got messed up like this one or just burnt out, uh, it could potentially cause a fire. I mean, there are examples of that out there. Uh, so that's why the thermal runaway protection is important. But I mean, overall, the process isn't hard. It's just uh, taking a couple of things off and moving a couple of screws and just swapping them out. Uh, like I said, if you're not sure that um, the actual probe is bad, you can use a multimeter and uh, just check for the resistance. You will have to check uh, what it's supposed to be for that particular one. I think this one is expecting a 500 ohm resistance, if I'm not mistaken. But I'll link to that process in the description below so that you can go through it if it's something you want to do. Um, now, again, I did have to buy this part I think it was 18 bucks or something like that. So it's not something I want to do all the time, but knowing that this was a um, refurbished unit and I was having issues with it, and then obviously it was throwing the min temp error now that I couldn't get past even if I wanted to, um, I just went ahead and spent the 18 bucks. 
Uh, so I, it is what it is. <laughs> but yeah, if you have any questions or would like any more information, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you.